Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's Wednesday evening, and so we come at the end of another day to give God thanks for his goodness and mercy to us throughout this day, and to entrust our evening and our night to him. And so let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. Amen. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, <clears throat> for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory and our collect. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, our psalm this evening Psalm 136, Psalm 136.
give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. Um, to him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate. His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Amen. And so that is the refrain. In good times and in bad times, God's love endures forever. And of course, this is a God's covenant love. God has made a covenant with his people that he will endure with them forever. He will be with them forever. And he's going to be there through the good and through the bad. And through the, through, through, uh, through the Red Sea, through the wilderness. Uh, he's going to destroy their enemies for them. And his love will endure forever. Sisters and brothers, that's the same, that's the same promise that God has given us. His children. Uh, a greater promise, in fact. That, that not just his love will be with us forever, but his spirit will endure with us forever because of his great love for us. Amen. Romans chapter 2 is our New Testament reading. Romans chapter 2, from verse 1 to 16. <clears throat> Romans chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. You therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, 
you are condemning yourself. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's righteous, God's judgment against, though we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor and immortality. He will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor and peace for everyone who does good. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. But all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight. But it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them and at other times even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. All right, so Paul continues his teaching on God's judgment. Remember chapter 1, God's judgment took the form of God allowing people to do what they want <laughs> rather than rather than restraining their sinfulness by grace he simply gives them over to their own sinful desires now here in chapter 2 paul is is addressing you could say he's addressing those who are under the law those are the the jewish people those who those who have the, the, the word of God. And he's saying that you are not going to escape God's judgment either. You know, in chapter 1 he talks about people who don't, who don't have the, the gospel. Who, who don't have the law of God. Gentiles who are outside of God's, uh, 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 of God's covenantal relationship. And here is... is um, he is addressing, he's talking both to Jew and to Gentile, but primarily he's saying there is a difference between those who have the law and those who don't have the law. Not that, not that they, will be they will not have judgment. God will judge both those people. The ones who don't have the law, who reject Christ, will be judged according to the knowledge that they have. Those who have the law, 
those who are the, the, the those who are the religious people those who are uh, those who are um uh, the, the, the 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 Jews of old and frankly in our in our application you could say the 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 person in the church the person who who know of God's goodness and God's mercy and God's requirements that person will be judged according to the law according to the word of God according to the knowledge of God's law so neither the Jew nor the Gentile is going to escape God's punishment God's just judgment and because God does not show favoritism God is not partial to one or the other verse 6 God will repay each person according to what they have done to those who by persistence in doing good seek glory honor and immortality he will give eternal life but to those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil there will be wrath and anger <laughs> So Paul mentions two groups of people. The one who one group of people they they persist in doing good, they seek God's glory, they seek honor, they seek the honor and, and they seek immortality and so on. They will be given eternal life by the grace of God, of course. But there are those who are self seeking and who reject the truth. They will be judged according to God's wrath and anger two groups of people and it all depends on where your heart is one is seeking to do that which is good that which is right they will receive eternal life the other is self-seeking seeking to do um to, to to honor themselves alone they will receive judgment against from god's anger and wrath and in, in the first part, verse, verse 3 and 4, Paul says, So when you are a mere human being, pass judgment on others, yet do the same thing. Do you think you will escape God's judgment? And he's talking about people who, who stand in judgment of other people. He said, just because you think you have the law, just because you think you know what's right, if you persist in doing evil, you will not escape. God's judgment in fact he says it is because of the it is because of God's kindness and forbearance and patience while judgment hasn't come already in verse 4 and so he said is God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance the reason judgment has not come is because God is kind and patient with you giving you time to repent but uh, but one day that time will run out and god's patience will no longer be there one day the judgment will come the reason judgment hasn't come is because god is kind and he's patient and he's long-suffering his forbearance not one not realizing that god's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance the reason that god has granted you grace to be here today sisters and brothers paul says is because god is kind and he's patient and he wants us to repent every day we get we we are alive it's another opportunity for us to live a life of repentance repentance is a life it should be should 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 be um, something that we do every day we should live in fact a life of repentance because repentance is realizing our our need of God realizing that we can do nothing without him and so let us pray Lord, we, we are grateful for uh, your forbearance, for your kindness, for your patience to us. The kindness that leads us to repentance. 
And so, Lord, we pray that you will grant us that grace of repentance, we pray, tonight, this evening, as we come to the end of this day. Help us to truly repent, to turn from, from that which is displeasing to you, from all that is unrighteous and unholy in your sight, and to seek your love, your mercy, your, your holiness in us, to seek your righteousness and your righteousness alone. Forgive us for our own self-centeredness. Forgive us for our own self-righteousness. And help us to seek you, to seek to do that which is good, to seek to honor you, to seek, in fact, eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, the day is over and we turn to you before we take our rest. You have been with us all the day long and for all your mercies, perceived and unperceived, we give you thanks. Of all that is that has been sinful in our lives today, in thought, in word and deed, we repent and we ask your gracious forgiveness as we also forgive all those who have offended us. Grant us now the blessings of a quiet mind and a trustful spirit, the freedom from fear of a child in his father's house. So let us rest in you at peace with you and with all people tonight and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, Support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work on earth is done. Then in your mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We bring before God those that are on our hearts this evening. And we pray that God will bring his mercy and grace into their lives. Lord, we ask that you'll intervene in the lives of all those we pray for each day. Bring your mercy and grace to them, we pray. Strengthen them in body, mind and spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for my cousins Dural and Yuan. We pray for Glennis and Bob and Claire and uh, Muriel and Susan in the hospital. We pray for Dion and Wendy and Jane Lindsay. Uh, Crystal Comfort. Hannah, Jean, Deborah, Thelma, David and Bernadette, Dolly and Desmond, Veronica and Chester, Nadine, Pauline and Roy and the family, Doreen, Andy, Maxine, Tavern, Salima, Selvi, Marie James, Janetta's sister, Ryan, Andrew, Keith, Daisy, Johanna, Mac, Maxine, Mokun, Pat and Ray, Rona and Keog. <coughs> we also pray for Jean and Walter and Monica and Auntie Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our night prayer guide us waking O Lord and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace keep watch dear Lord with those who work or watch or weep this night 
and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne and illumine this night with your celestial brightness that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord grant his angels to take charge over you tonight and keep you safe as you sleep. May the Lord give you rest and peace and comfort and free you from all pain and distress. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.